Hey everybody, it's Scotty from Scotty's Record Shop with an, an April, we're in April, right? April, <laughs> it's been a long month, guys. Uh, an April Vinyl Finds. Um, there's a, a lot of records here, um, all kinds of different genres, everything from, you know, AOR, some jazz, some country, some country rock, uh, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff. Uh, I'd like to take and thank uh, my buddy Roger for, for helping me... Um, with a lot of things, but uh, one of the things he helped me with this month was getting to my favorite little record store um, with tons and tons and tons of dollar records, um, and that was a, a great haul from there. I'm going to try to blow through these. I, I have a feeling this might be kind of a long video. I apologize, but um, hopefully you stick with it. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here, um, interesting to me anyway, so let me put the mouse down. Uh, hello. Let's try this again. <laughs> The most down here. Ugh. Start off with some really classy stuff from Billy. This was not a dollar. It wasn't horribly expensive, but this is such a wonderful record. Billy Holiday's "Lady Sings the Blues," an original Verve pressing. A wonderful record. I love Billy Holiday's work. Always have and always will. This one actually just came in today. I haven't cleaned it or sleeved it or anything. Um, like I said, just in today in the mail. Um, from 1966. The Birds. And their album, Fifth Dimension. This is on the 360. i got to change the um, inner sleeve as well. Like I said, I haven't done anything with this yet. Great shape, though. On the 360 label. Um... This is a really good record. Actually, I really like these guys. The Raspberries. And their first record, 1972. Raspberries from Cleveland, Ohio. With the, one of the big hit singles off of this was um, um, Go All The Way. Their first single. A great record, though. From the Raspberries. They only put four albums out. Um, I've got them on disc, but that's my first. I've got a best of of theirs, actually. But, um... This was one of those just to fill up my, my... I did a Doobie Brothers video, but I didn't have a couple of later Doobie Brother albums on on the um, Capitol label. This is one that I was missing right here. Not the, you know, the best, but I got it really, really cheap. I think I paid a buck for that. Great one from Alvin Lee in 10 Years After. Paid a couple dollars for this one, but well worth it on the original Durham label. Um, the uh, Alvin Lee and Company album. Great stuff. Early 70s, 10 years after. You just can't go wrong at all with that. Um, okay, got some, some um, 180 gram vinyl that I actually picked up at my local shop. <clears throat> been thinking about this one for a long time, and I wasn't sure if I'd dig it or not. I've heard mixed reviews, but um, Boston's first album on um, Friday Music. Uh, and it's a double, it's a, um, a gatefold pressing. It's not bad. It's, it, you know, I didn't get it, you know, at a reduced price or anything, but I'm, I don't regret buying it either. You can't go wrong with Boston's first album anyway. Here we go. Jimi Hendrix. The Jimi Hendrix Experience. Are you experienced? The mono pressing. This was the uh, 2013, I believe, pressing of this uh, on 180 gram vinyl. Uh, I wasn't sure how this was going to sound either, um, but it really is fantastic. I have a, I have a pressing in, on CD of this, an earlier pressing of mono album but it sounds so warm on vinyl just great big brother in the holding company cheap thrills and this is a numbered i don't i can't see what number it uh 2086 i believe uh, it was a numbered um mono too it mono it sounds really great in mono as well cheap thrills 180 gram vinyl okay now we're going to get into some other vinyl here, um, I showed one of these in an earlier press in an earlier video. Uh, I picked a different copy up. Um, the cover is in kind of so-so 
condition, but the album seems to be in a lot better condition than the one that I picked up for Next to Nothing. Uh, Joni Mitchell's Lady of the Canyon. I absolutely love this record. I'm hoping that um, this sounds a lot better than um, the copy that I already have. Even if I have to do a Frankenstein and switch covers and vinyl. It's a great record right here. The, my only complaint about this is it's not long enough. There could have been some more music put on this, but it is what it is. An original um, Apple pressing of um, Ringo Starr's Blast from Your Past. Fantastic record from him. Really, if you want to, if you need, if you want to get a Ringo Starr album and you only want to get one, this would be the one to get. I, I think you should get more personally, but if you're only going to get one, that would be the one to get. An upgrade copy of um, this wonderful McCartney record, 1981. I, um, I'm going to keep my other copy of it because it has such sentimental value um, to me. Um, yeah, my computer just went weird. Yeah, it has such sentimental value that I'm not going to get rid of it, but this is a pristine copy of this original pressing. Okay. This is an upgrade, too, for um, Paul McCartney's Pipes of Peace record, not his best, but, um, you know, you definitely should have it if you're a McCartney fan. But an upgrade copy, my copy of this um, was trashed. So, nice to have a nice, nice clean copy. Okay, Jackson Brown's Saturate Before Using. This is my third copy of this. Uh, the reason that I picked this up is it was only like a couple bucks, and it's the original textured it's, um, burlap feels like burlap textured cover first pressing of this record 1972 this is such a wonderful record too um they really need to reissue this though and i don't think maybe maybe they have but um there's a, a 45 version of the song rock me on the water which is a, a different version than on here and it really needs to be heard by the public I mean, I don't think it's on anything else. I have the 45 of it when it was originally issued in 72, but um, people really need to hear it. It's cool. Not that the version on here isn't bad. Great record. Jackson Brown, Saturate Before Using. Um, now we're going to get into the dollar records here. Pick this up for a dollar. This is a French, uh, a, a Canadian pressing of a Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons um, collection, a double album. Uh, and... and my wife and I were listening to this the other night, and I was really getting off on it. I, I didn't mind Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, but this is a really, really nice collection in great shape on private stock. That's the label. Um, and again, this is a Canadian pressing. I don't even know if this particular album came out in America or not. It may have, but mine's Canadian pressing. Great double album. This is a weird one. I'm not sure where I'm gonna. This is gonna go, but um, <laughs> a friend of mine, Roger, threw this in my pile. Uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, cover seen better days. The record is in is in okay shape, but it's the novelty of it all. You know, it's my generation kind of growing up late '60s, early '70s. Um, but it's a, in all honesty, it's a terrible album. <laughs> it's and it's not one of these so bad that it's good it's it's just so bad i'm not even sure um i may pass this along to my friend roger just because he was like oh yeah you're gonna love it it's really bad but it's really good i have um two girls change the subject totally two girls 110 113 and my girls are cool they like herman's hermits and um so whenever i see a herman's hermit album out in the wild i try to pick it up i only have a few of them but um but they love them, and uh, I like them too. It's um, their second album on tour. It's not a live album, but it's a great record, actually, for Herman's Herman. It's one of the best ones they put out. This is in great shape for a buck. I saw that, and I was like, okay, girls, Herman's Hermit. Daddy's bringing it home. Um, the Best of Herman's Hermits, Volume 1. Uh, I'm sorry, Volume 2. I need Volume 1. Um, again, on the original MGM label. Uh, in really, really good shape, too. I'm happy about that. Girls loved it. They made Daddy-O play it several times after I brought it home. Um, an upgrade copy for this one. Um, 1969, Neil Diamond, Taproot Manuscript. It also, uh, it's a gatefold. 
without taking it out. Uh, also comes with the booklet. That's uh, the booklet right there. The booklet that comes with it. This is on the um, Uni label, original pressing. Uh, and this is a really interesting record. Side two is this really strange medley of like African-ish kind of, for lack of a better term, I guess, medley. It's really kind of a cool record, though. I like Neil Diamond. I say, okay, staying in the '60s and kind of weird, but another group that I just really like. I think this completes my collection, too. Ooh, I'm sure you're all excited to hear that. Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. <laughs> Last couple times I was at the Rick Connection, I saw this and I passed it up and I thought, oh, somebody will buy it because it's in fantastic shape. Greatest hits. Nobody picked it up. So I said, okay, after the third time seeing it, it's mine. You know, I gave you guys a chance. Um, a couple of Carly Simon albums, both of them with very provocative covers um as my wife referred to it being the firm stern conservative christian that she is um she's like uh carly needs to put some clothes on <laughs> um playing possum 1975 um not one of her best albums not her worst album either but um an original pressing of that a little bit of ring wear but the record is in fantastic shape and it was a buck the next one is boys in the trees i wonder why um this is the one where my wife looked at the cover and said she really needs to put some clothes on honey but anyway um carly simon this is uh has uh, 1978 had the hit single you belong to me i guess she was trying to get james taylor's attention again and everybody else's, even if she didn't get his. Here's a here's an album I didn't have. Uh, I saw it for a buck. It was in good shape. Original pressing. I went, okay, great. The Monkees, Headquarters. Uh, why not? I said, I didn't have this record. Uh, on, on vinyl, anyway. I, I grabbed it. Another Monkees. This is, the cover's trashed a little bit. But um, it's an original pressing of the very first Monkees album. And um, I didn't have an original pressing, so I grabbed it. And um, like I said, if you see the bottom here, the cover's got some, some real bad issues going on. It's intact. There's no there's no splits or anything. It's weird. It's just got some marks on it. Vinyl is in fantastic shape. It's an original pressing of the very first Monkey album. All right, here we get it. Oh, this is good stuff right here. James Brown, a couple of James Brown records. This one came out in the UK back in 76. Saw this online and I, I was trying to find some James Brown um, a collection of stuff. And um, Boy, this flips the bill on Polydor. Double album. Uh, fantastic collection of James Brown records. Uh, James Brown um, singles. Uh, going all the way from, from um, the late 50s. Um, Straight up through the mid '70s, when this came out, a fantastic collection. The other one I found, I got this um, for like two bucks. Um, it's a Rhino. I believe this is on Rhino. Is it? Uh, I see. Anyway, <clears throat> James Brown's greatest hits. It's a shorter version of this other one. Uh, you know, a great record. Don't get me wrong. Uh, kind of leaves you wanting more uh, because it's so short. But. Um, Anyway, still in its shrink and everything. And great for a couple bucks in fantastic shape. I'll take it. Okay. Um, leaving the funk but staying with the soul. Um, Roberta Flack. Uh, this is her second album, 1970. Uh, I've got her first seven or eight albums now. This pretty much does it. Let me get some more of her later stuff, like um, later 70s and early 80s stuff. I just really like Roberta Flack. Uh, this is her second album. And um, another one from her that I picked up for a buck was uh, Blue Lights in the Basement, 1977. Some ring wear, kind of expected. The vinyl's in great shape, so, yeah, you know, went with it. Very happy with that. Not a bad record for her. Um, I thought I was done with my Bee Gees um, collection. I had this on CD, and um, I'd never seen it in the wild, and it was there for a buck. BG's Greatest Hits Volume 2. 
Okay, I'll, I'll pick it up because I don't have the, I don't have this. Um, like I said, on on vinyl. This came out in 1972, I believe, and um, one of the first things issued on the um, RSO, Robert Stiglitz Organization record label, when they first jumped over there. Stephen Bishop. This is just, this is just good pop music from the 70s. Really well written. 77 or 78 this one came out again okay, for a buck well worth it um, the Carpenters album I have the I have this album but I didn't have um, the gatefold of this this is uh, I, I the non gatefold cover of this this was in such good shape I mean the covers got a little ring wear on it but the vinyl was in such good shape um, and it had the original um, booklet that came with it and um, the original inner sleeve um, I just I grabbed it I just figured a buck and I didn't have it and I've always been such a, a big fan um, of the Carpenters anyway so um, I think the only thing I'm missing by them now is um, an album uh, the singles 1974 to 1978 anybody has that you know my birthday's coming up <laughs> Just saying. Um, okay. This is going to get kind of weird. I, I like this guy a lot. Uh, I saw his albums are kind of hard to find. Um, a guy named Keith Green. He was a, he was a Christian artist, a very um, prolific Christian artist in the late 70s, mid late 70s, early 80s. He died in 1982 in a plane crash with his kids. It was a really horribly tragic thing um, with his wife watching. Uh, it was not fun. Um, anyway. This was, I believe, his second record. No compromise. Uh, these are all original pressings. I'll just blow through these really quickly. Some of these are posthumous albums that he that were put out after he passed. Um, Keith Green, a very interesting artist. He, he's kind of like the Billy Joel of of the Christian community, at least back in the seventies. You know, the only way I could really describe him. He didn't sound like Billy Joel, but he was quite the mean piano player, and he. He was a very thoughtful writer, like Billy Joel was. So, another one from him, and a couple more from Keith Green. I don't have a huge collection of, like, quote-unquote, Jesus music, but um, um, some of the 70s stuff I really do enjoy. Like I said before in another video, I find a lot of it now very plastic and phony, but that's the last one. Okay, moving on. God only knows how long this video has run so far, but um, keep it moving. Yeah, all right. Joe Walsh, 1983. You bought it, you name it. Um, I bought it for a buck, so, and I'd pay a buck for it. I'm still missing a few Joe Walsh albums. Uh, love Joe Walsh. Not his best work, but I, but um, for a buck. A friend of mine, Roger wants that record. He's like, I don't have that record. And he, he actually saw it and he, he opted to buy it and then he put it in my pile and he said, You buy it. All right, all right. Now he wants it. <laughs> Buffer. <laughs> Get him a copy. Um, this is a great record right here. Um, some live music. Conquistador. Fantastic stuff. And purple Harem. There we go. Pressing it out. Ricky Nelson. <laughs> Some early rock and roll from Ricky Nelson. Or Rick and Nelson. And this is an original pressing. In fantastic shape. For a box. Of that record. Let's try to move through a little quickly here. Yeah. Um, okay, what do we got here? <laughs> Roger threw this in the pile. He said, this is so you, Scott. He said, okay. Sister Sledge. We are family. For you guys in Boston. Okay. Um, and uh, I believe this has got, he's the greatest dancer on it, too. Original testing of that. All right. The OJs. I got to get more OJs. I love the OJs, but... 
Stuff like the OJs, the spinners, stuff like that. I don't have a lot of stuff like that on vinyl. I love it. Um, anyway, this is a 1975 album by them. Here we go, pressing. Okay, going totally in an opposite direction now. The Go Go's. Horrible cover. <laughs> Not a bad record, though. Uh, 19. 82, I believe it's Vacation. I have their first album. Um, so that one and this one wrap it up, I believe. I don't think there are any more Go-Go's albums after this. No, there's a Belinda Carlisle album. That's okay. Came out in the 80s. Um, but um, that wraps up the Go-Go's, I think. Both of those were on IRS. A couple of KC and the Sunshine Band albums. Do you want a party? 1978. And from the next album, 1979, this one came out, had their last big hit, which wasn't a disco hit, which was uh, a mellow love song, Please Don't Go. In great shape. All right. Let's get into some um, change of uh, mood and style again. Sammy Hagar. This is a bad record. I, 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 I still need, like, some of his earlier stuff. I've got Standing Hampton. Uh, I may have a couple of other ones. I know I need Three Lock Box and um, VOA. I don't have that on vinyl. I'll get them sooner or later. But Sammy Hayes got really good, just pick-me-up, feel-good, which I've needed lately, believe me. Music. Good old Sammy Hagar. A couple of Bonnie Raitt albums. Not her best albums. But um, to finish the collection, I'm missing two Bonnie Raitt albums, I believe, and that's it. I really like Bonnie Raitt. Something else that really lifts my spirits up. Here's the other one. Again, early 80s, Bonnie Raitt. Yeah, you know, but what can you do? Early 80s um, music. These guys put out a couple of records. This was actually pretty good. Honestly, Quarter Flash had a couple of hit singles off of this one. Um, heart in my heart, and find another, find another. Anyway, a good record for them. Gaffin. This is an upgrade copy. I saw this, and I I, I couldn't believe first of all that I saw it for a buck uh, in the shape that it was in. Xanadu. <laughs> I like like this record. Um, I like who's on it. Um, anyway, um, my copy wasn't in bad shape, but this was a much better shape. So I snagged that for a buck. Another one for a buck. Somebody who just got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And don't get me wrong, I love her work, but she doesn't belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's not rock and roll. She wasn't, like, super innovative or anything. If you want to put somebody in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, put the Moody Blues in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, there's a lot of other groups. You, you fill in the blanks there. Go on your own tirades at home. I've gone on them, too. But Donna Summers, live and more, double album, poster and everything. Although the poster in here looks like it came from um, the On the Radio album. I've got to check and see if, if, that, got, if that happened. Because my On the Radio album doesn't have a poster in it but it kind of has that on the radio look but a good album from her live and more almost done kids toto's first record this album's great i'm not sure if i like this one more or hydra but uh, probably hydra maybe a little more but still a great record from toto it's an upgrade copy mine was old <laughs> BTO. Best of BTO. Just just because. I have all the other, a bunch of other BTO albums, but I didn't have this one. Everybody needs this one, okay? Just a good party album. Textured um, cover and everything. Really nice. Original pressing. Okay, this one's interesting. Um, because I found it in the dollar bin. Okay, now, the cover of this is, isn't in great shape. But I got it simply because of what it was. In a dollar bin, kids. 
Now, what else is really cool about this, I'm going to take her out and show you, is the pressing. Those of you Kissaholics will recognize this. First pressing. Ooh. Again, the vinyl is in, I would call it VG Plus. Yeah, I'd call it VG Plus probably. Um, cover is, ugh, you know, cover has got seam splits. Well, actually, it doesn't even have seam splits. It actually just needs to be glued again. But, I mean, it is tattered and worn. But I, believe it or not, I don't have a lot of early kiss. I lost a lot of it. So, um, to find this on for a buck was like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Had no problem grabbing that. Here. Again, I know this is running a little long, but I just assume shoot the one video while I'm I got the strength up here and Okay. For you foreigner fans, Lou Graham's first record. I like this record. I know some people are like, but I kinda like this record. Personally. Okay. Oh, the records here fell. I'm trying to pop through these. John Cougar's, actually what would be his third album. Um, really the first one anybody paid attention to here in America. But um, I Need a Lover That Won't Drive Me Crazy. It was on this one. 1980? I want to say. For that one. Let's go back to the 60s for this one. It's the very best. Not the very best. Even better. The Greatest Hits of Petula Clark. Downtown. And this has got the poster in it and everything. And it's really, really clean. Really nice shape for this one. Let's fly back to the 70s again. Chic. Freak. You know, some good old, just good old funky disco. Chic. And for a buck, you want. Burton Cummings, lead singer from, um, oops, lead singer from the Guess Who. And a uh, solo album from him, Stan Tall, was on this record. A really good record from him, from Burton Cummings. Loved his voice. He still sounds great. He still sounds great after all these years. A couple more kids, I know. Donovan. <laughs> Donovan. Anyway, um, the only Donovan album you really need. Sorry, but not, I, I, I like Donovan, but only in doses. This is a great dose right here. An original pressing, too. It's a, This is a stereo pressing of this one. I'm not sure if there is even mono. I think there were some monos of this, but... Um, stereo pressing of his greatest hits. An epic. The original. Yellow epic label. A couple of Pat Benatar records. One of them that I was missing. A couple of them that I was missing, actually. Her fourth album. And her fifth album. I believe it was her fifth album, live. Great shape for a buck. Moving on here. Uncle Ted. Uncle Ted Nugent. And um, some ring wear on this one, but it was a buck. And the uh, vinyl is an original pressing. It's original um, orange epic label. And it's the vinyl is in great shape. So I went, and I didn't have this one. So I thought, ah, you know, I'm going to pick this up. See it every once in a while, in a while, but finally just got around to picking it up. Another Neil Diamond. Um, Hot August Night. This is an original pressing. It's a gatefold. Um, my other copy of this is not a gatefold. It's an 80s pressing on MCA. This is the original um, Black Rainbow MCA pressing from 73, I believe. 72, 73. Of that record. It's a good Neil Diamond record, too. Charlie Daniels Band, Sail Tramp, original pressing of this. I've yet to listen to this album, but I picked it up. I, I like I like CDB, and I, I knew that era of you know, CDB, I'd like it, so. 1979, I mean, my reflections, is that what this one is? Yeah. Devil went down Georgia. Not a bad record from Charlie Daniels Band. And uh, Full Moon, Legend of Willie Swamp, and this is a really good record for them. 
Uh, do I have any more in here? Let's see. One more for you guys. Glenn Fry's second record. And uh, it's got some serious ring wear going on, but um, again, uh, the vinyl's in good shape. So, so anyway, that's a hell of a pile to go through. I appreciate you guys sitting through this. Again, thank you for 100 subscribers. Um, thank you for those of you who were thinking about me when I was absent and not doing so well. Uh, and uh, again, just thank you for, for everything, VC. Until next time, everybody, peace and love.